Are you a woodworker in distress? Well today I'm going to show you how to do a distress paint finish and I've got two end tables in production here and the base coat is on and I'm ready to apply the crackle and I get a lot of questions and comments about this part of the process so I thought I would make a video focusing on how to apply crackle and the number one question that I get is where to buy the product and unfortunately a lot of things go out of production I've tried three different brands of crackle and they are no longer made this one you might see in a lot of videos my older videos and I bought it at Lowe's Valspar no longer makes it so I switched to a Sherwin Williams product that was on the shelf briefly and then they stopped making it and so I have two new products here that I bought online and I'm going to be testing these out. I haven't tried them yet before, but the other brands have all done uh, pretty much the same thing. So I'm not expecting uh, these to do anything drastically different, but there is some technique that you need to know in terms of how to apply it in the consistency that you want to get the result that you're looking for. So there's some pitfalls and things you need to know, and I'm going to cover that in more detail in this video. And I'll show you some of my samples here. This is from the High Falls Furniture product line. And the type of effect that I like to go for is very fine, barely noticeable cracks in the paint, and that's achieved by applying a very thin coat of the crackle and concentrating on the areas on the corners where you want to remove the paint later on. Uh, this is showing more of the crackle detail. And so that's pretty much the effect that I want to go for. But if you apply a heavier coat of this crackle product, you'll get wider cracks like what you see on the label here. But I try to avoid that because it makes the finishing process uh, more difficult and kind of stand out uh, and be more noticeable. But for uh, heavier distressed painted finishes, I will apply a heavier coat and get more of that contrasting layer underneath the show through. And you can do some creative things with contrasting colors to get a two-tone effect. And... Uh, You can vary the degree of distressing. I would consider this a heavier distressing. To apply the crackle in a thin layer, you need to work with a painter's palette. And I like to use a plate. These are cheap dollar store plates made from, I think, melamine plastic. And these work particularly well with the lip around it. Um, but you only want to pour a little bit out at a time and then use the palette to spread out thin layer and you use a lot of a dabbing motion as opposed to loading the brush and applying it like you would do a coat of paint. You really want to avoid doing that and you want to avoid putting too much on in one spot. But I will illustrate that technique in just a moment. These are some brushes that I designate for applying crackle and to do uh, the, some test samples and small areas I'm going to just use a small brush like this and you normally wouldn't want to paint with a brush like this but applying the crackle is really hard on the brushes I use a lot of jabbing and dabbing so you don't want to use a new brush to apply the crackle and as the brush gets worn out I will actually cut some of the ends of the bristles off that get worn and so I did that here that makes it actually work better makes the brush stiffer and so I, I, this is a size I typically use for furniture and if I have a big large area to cover I'll use this brush and I trimmed about an inch off the bristles there and that makes it very stiff so that makes the uh, product easier to spread out because you just want to dab certain areas and then brush it to get a very thin layer and you don't want to make it 
too consistent. You actually want it to be varied to some degree from thin to almost barely covered so that you get a variation in the crackle effect. Um, so the crackle is applied in a thin coat so the coverage that you would expect to get from a quart uh, I mean this lasted uh, I think three years <laughs> you really don't use that much of the product and uh, this cost about twenty five dollars this I think was about eight or nine dollars so I have the base coat on for the base coat I get a lot of questions about what products I use and for base coating it's really not critical you can use a wide variety of products as long as you stick with latex but some do work better than others this product I have is called the Ben I use Benjamin Moore as pretty much the, the main brand uh, I haven't tried all the brands Ben Moore makes good quality paints and they have a good color palette the, the designers that I work with prefer to work with so I just stick with Ben Moore and this is the Ben it's a paint and primer combination and it works good for a base coat because it gets good coverage it's a good product to work with and it dries fairly quick and most modern paints that you can get nowadays have drying agents that make them dry quicker and this is good for you know if you're trying to make money as a painter uh, or you just want to get your job done quicker which you know most homeowners you know find that appealing too so most paint formulas cater to fast drawing products um, but for faux finishing if you're working with distressed paint um, it's better to work with a product that doesn't dry as fast and so for the top coat I use the Regal which does actually dry still fast. I've, I've worked with other brands, other types of paint that don't have any drying agent. Like even, you know, simple basic paints actually sometimes work the best, but it's really hard to find one. Um, and Ben Moore used to make a contractor grade paint that was the perfect product. They don't make it anymore. It was called Super Spec. But that paint was ideal, dried super slow, but it worked really well for applying paint with a sponge and for faux finishing, working with crackle. But if you can find a, a brand of paint that doesn't have those fast drawing additives, uh, ammonia is a very common one, and as soon as you open up the paint lid, you'll be able to smell ammonia. And if it has that ammonia smell, that's not a good paint to work with for faux finishing. So if your paint smells nice and refreshing <laughs> when you open up the lid, it probably will work better. Um, I don't know, that's, that's kind of a strange rule. But, um, but this works good for a base coat. The color is HC76 Davenport Tan. It's a nice neutral color to work with, and it, it works with a lot of other colors. And this is the historical color palette from Ben Moore. And I recommend this as a starting point for selecting colors, working with customers. It has just, you know, some very nice muted tones. And this is the starting point. The, the fan decks are huge, so you can get virtually any color. But, you know, this is a nice, nice palette to work with. And a lot of the colors that are in my set there are based on these arrangements here. So the uh, top coat color that I'm going to apply on the end tables here is kind of a creamy white color. It's called creamy white. And so lighter colors generally are more difficult to work with with the crackle because they generally are more reactive. They dry faster and the effects are more noticeable if you make a mistake uh, it's it's more noticeable on a lighter color so uh, sometimes I tr charge more money for working with lighter colors in particular white it can be problematic um, but for applying the paint I use either a sponge and uh, another dabbing brush uh, sometimes I use a roller 
And so what I'm going to do is apply some different consistencies, some, a thick layer of crackle and a thin layer, just to contrast and compare what the different techniques will produce. And uh, we'll go from there. So get your silicone bumpers, cuttingboardfeet.com, blah, blah, blah. And uh, these are going to have butternut on the tops. These are the tops over here. Very pretty wood. And so this is sanded to 150 grit on the orbital. And I have one coat of poly on it now. It'll be a three coat poly finish with a flat top coat. And that'll look nice with the distressed white. So I'm not going for a heavily distressed look on this. I'm going to apply a very, very thin coat of the crackle. And it's just going to have a little bit of paint removed on the more exposed edges. So another common question that I get is about milk paint and if I ever use milk paint or recommend those products. And I know woodworkers that prefer milk paint because it's a traditional authentic finish and also it's environmentally friendly coating which you know is a good selling point. So there's a lot of reasons why you would want to use milk paint for special projects, but all in all, I stay away from it entirely for two main reasons. One, the designers that I work with prefer to have a wider color palette, and this is a very small sampling of colors that Ben Moore offers. They have two big fan decks plus other collections, and it's just nice to have that variety. The other reason is in regards to just mixing the paint and the fact that it's labor intensive, the product, the milk paint product itself is expensive and it's just not production friendly. It's good to be able to get as many gallons as you need pre-mixed and pre-stirred ready to go and if you're putting a varnish over the milk paint does it really matter uh, what's underneath that varnish, the final sheen and effect of the surface quality is going to be determined by whatever varnish you put over it so the actual color coat really doesn't matter and for what I'm doing the house paint works fine and it gives me the result that, that I need so milk paint would be just a, a overkill in my case but that's my final answer I don't do milk paint and I get good results with these products. So, so this is the Modern Masters Crackle for latex paint. It costs about $25. It's not cheap, but it should last quite a while. Technically, these shouldn't need mixing. It should be a consistent thing that doesn't separate, but I, I like to stir it just, just in case. You want to try to avoid loading the brush too much, so I'm just going to, I'm going to apply a, a, a thick coat here just to see what a thick coat and a thin coat will do. So I'm just going to put some on like I would paint a coat of paint.
Okay, so I got this product, it seemed fairly common. It's called Ceram Coat. But it does say it's for wood. So it looks similar. We'll see what it does. I think this costs around eight dollars. So if you just need a little bit of crack hole for a couple of projects, this is a less expensive alternative. But this is only available in the 32 ounce size. So So I've got a little bit of this product left. I'll just uh, do a test sample for reference. This product uh, had a milky color, but it does pretty much the same thing. So I, I concentrate more product on these edges around the perimeter because that's where I'll go over it with a knife and then I do a very sparse coat on the wider flat surfaces and I'm very careful not to get too much in one spot because that'll show a lot of distressing there which is not what I want to do. So I start with the shelf and then work out with the legs and I'll start applying it where most of the distressing or paint removal will take place. So the bottoms of the legs is the 
part of the furniture that will typically show the most distressing. Uh, so I usually start in those spots and on these outside edges and then just kind of feather the product out. <laughs> 